boys lose something? Shouldn't we bring those boys in or something? Trust me, whatever punishment we give them, it's nothing compared to what's waiting for them at home. Those boys know if anything was to happen to that horse, if it got injured, the whole family would lose its ability to plow the field, make food for the winter. So that's it? They're just gonna feel really, really guilty? It works. Believe me, it won't happen again. I guess growing up here, you know all this stuff. You have no idea. Ohio somewhere. <coughs> Are you small me? <coughs> I know, me too. Me too, buddy. <coughs> I gotta get you something for that cough. Where's your bathroom? Oh, it's right back there. Thank you. Thank you. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What's that? I don't know. I know you don't want to talk about it, but you can't keep putting it off. You have to decide. What is there to decide? You guys should be enjoying your time now. You can't keep killing yourselves running this old inn. Who will I cook for if, if we close the inn? We, we will have no guests. So that's the point. Aunt Lydia, you wouldn't have to cook anymore. I love to cook. Three of you have been taking care of me since I was 10 years old. I don't know what I would do without you. Your family. And you're my family. So listen to me, please. I would like to help. I have a little money. This inn was built by your grandfather. We have been running it for decades. And just last week, you fell down the stairs carrying the chamber pot. Uh, at least it wasn't full. <laughs> That's not even remotely funny. You could have broken your neck. You could have. Honest work is from God. I'm so afraid if anything were to happen to any one of you. I don't want Rachel to be afraid. trouble yeah do you know where the nearest town is i can't get a signal uh, yeah it's sugar creek two miles that way you stay here i know a mechanic i'll send him to you great thank you yeah. Yeah. It is a difficult thing you ask. Okay. We will close the inn to paying guests. Thank you. On one condition. That if we have reason to believe that God has put a stranger at our door, we will not turn that stranger away. But that is scripture. 
There is no compromise in doing God's will. Agreed. You want the good news or the bad news? Good news. I can fix it. Bad news, you got a blown head gasket. It'll take a day or two to pull the engine head and resurface it a day to get it back in. Plus, I got to order the parts. That's another day or so. How much is that all going to cost? I'd say you're looking at about $400. <coughs> yeah, go ahead and order the parts. I'm going to need a deposit. Yeah, sure. Hang on. Get my wallet. Uh, hey, man, I know this is going to sound funny, but uh, I think somebody stole my wallet. You want to use the phone? Call somebody? <clears throat> I don't really have anybody to call. Well, the police station's right down the street. Um, can, can I just leave this here a couple days so I can figure something out? Pull it around back, but only for a couple days. Is there any place cheap to stay around here? There isn't even an expensive place to stay right now. Everything's booked up for the Swiss festival. This place is crawling with tourists. There's a campground a couple miles up the road. They might have a spot, if you don't mind roughing it. I don't really have much of a choice. Thanks. Daddy, I'm tired. I know, buddy. We'll find some place to rest real soon, I promise. Oh, ah, V Gates. We meet again? Where is your vehicle? Uh, turns out we did have trouble after all. Ah, perhaps you should buy a goot horse and buggy, eh? No, right now that doesn't sound like a bad idea. <coughs> oh, oh, your boy is ill. Where are you going? Uh, the guy says there's a uh, campground a couple miles up the road here. So. Oh, nine, nine. A campground is no place for a sick child. He should have a roof over his head. Well, even if I could find a place. No, not that much money, so. Uh... Hmm. Come. Come. I know a place. Yeah, come. It's good. I am Eli Troiler, and this is Rosie. I'm Joe Matthews. This is my son, Bobby. Good to meet you, Joe Matthews. How was lunch? Ugh, very filling. <laughs> How do you guys read that stuff? It'll turn your brains to mush. For keeping up with current events. Rachel, Kim, we need to go over the logistics for the festival next weekend. I'm thinking if we close off Main Street right here in the East End, okay, force all the traffic up on the right here, we've got this additional parking area. So we need a couple of barricades. I must go, Joe Matthews. It is past time for milking. Oh, no, what about the, uh... My cousins will take good care of you. Hi, Mama. Hi, I'm Joe. This is Bobby. We got cookies. Come on. Yeah. No electricity. This is our way. I understand, but, um... Still, it will be good, I think, for you and your boy, yes? 
I don't, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's gonna be great. So, you will stay. Uh, how much do you charge? Oh, Eli explained your situation. <laughs> You're tired. You will have dinner with us, and then you will get a good night's rest. We can discuss payment in the morning. I mean, seriously? I'm Berta. This is Lydia, and our sister Anna is with your boy on the swing. But, uh, ma'am, I, uh... You are welcome. Now, I'm told we can expect an even bigger crowd than last year, upwards of 60,000 people. Well, I called the sheriff's department. They have people standing by just in case. EMTs are on notice. Good. Rachel, your aunt's on the phone. Kim, write down what we want over here, okay? Hello? Barricade. Rachel! You will come to dinner, yeah? Hey, Aunt Lydia, I told you, you don't have to shout, remember? Uh, Bertha says you must meet Joe. Who's Joe? He's staying with us. His dad has no money. Is that right? Yeah. Where is Bobby's dad? Oh, good. Rachel is here. Rachel is our niece. Rachel, this is Joe Matthews. Officer. <laughs> So, Joe, what brings you to Sugar Creek? Are you here for the Swiss Festival? Um, just passing through. My truck broke down. We'll be moving on then. As soon as it's fixed, yeah. Heading home? I haven't decided. Where's home exactly? Oh, Rachel, so many questions. Let the man eat. He's talking. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking. Right, Joe? Well, let's just say we're between addresses. Where's Bobby's mom? My mom is in heaven. I'll save room for dessert. Mm -hmm. Oh, and tomorrow, I'll show you the kitties. Thank you, man. That was a delicious dinner. It's been a rough day. You just made it a whole lot better. Thank you. <laughs> First thing tomorrow, we'll talk about how I'm gonna pay for this. But right now, I'm just gonna get this little guy to bed. Aunt Berta, would it be all right if I spent the night tonight? Of course. You are always welcome. Good night, officer. If you need anything, I'll be right here. I thought we agreed to close the inn. We agreed, yes. Then what's he doing here? We also agreed that we would not turn away strangers. That man is no angel, trust me. <sighs> so suspicious all the time. Joe and his son are down on their luck. There is no shame in that. I know that you're trying to help, but we don't know anything about him. This is God's world, Rachel. He has put him into our lives for a reason. It is not for us to question that reason. All right, all right. Well, promise me then that you won't let him in the house unless I'm here. At least until I find out more about him. How will you do that? I'll ask him. Grant, it's me. Yeah, we're fine. 
No, I know they're looking for me, and that's why I left. Do you have any news? This... Listen, how many times do I tell you? They don't have any evidence. They have absolutely no proof that I did it. Well, just call Chloe and tell her to pay you whatever you need. Okay, Grant? Whatever it takes. I don't care. All right, I'll call you in a couple days. What are you doing? Oh, uh, well, I told your aunt that I would repair some stuff around the place to help pay for the use of the cabin. Huh? You two are really hitting it off. Children love Anna. She has a kind heart. Yeah, they all do. They're really good people. They believe in seeing the good in people. That's their way. What about you? Me? If anything were to happen to any one of them, I would make sure to find the person responsible. Hey, look. You don't know me. I don't blame you for being suspicious. But you don't gotta worry. I would never hurt anybody as kind and generous as your aunt's. Okay. Well, if you don't have anything to hide, how about I take a look at your driver's license? Believe me, if I could do that, I wouldn't be here. Meaning? Oh, my wallet got stolen. I lost my money, my ID. That's pretty convenient. Not for me. Really inconvenient. Especially when I'm being accused of something I'm not. Joe! Have you finished the ladder? Almost. Listen, the only reason I don't run you out of here right now is because they have it in their heads that they're supposed to help you and your son. As long as you're here, I'm going to be watching you. You just remember that. How could I forget? I told him. I'm sorry. I'm going to head into work. I'll be back. Ugh, oh, Rachel's always in a hurry. It's hard to believe that you two are even related. Her father, our brother, Frank, he too was a policeman. Was? That is not my story to tell. Now, I think the yard needs to be trimmed, yes? Yeah, happy to do it. Good. The scythe is in the barn. Scythe?
calling about a Joe Matthews? If you've never heard of him, why is he driving a truck with plates registered to your car dealership? No, 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 don't, don't hang up. Hello? Hello? Hmm, is Joe Matthews? This guy spent the night at my aunt's house last night. He's got no money, no ID, bad habit of not answering a question. None of which makes him a criminal. I overheard a phone conversation he had last night. He was trying to convince somebody that he wasn't guilty of something. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I just called the car dealership, but they've never heard of him. Listen, I know I'm new and all, but I have a real ass with this stuff. Uh, I don't know. Trust me. Okay, so his name is Joe Matthews, Texas Plate. What else? Uh, he's about 6'2", brown hair, solid. He's got a son, Bobby, he's about five. And what? Yeah, he's got this long hair, scruffy beard, dresses like he just crawled out of a dumpster, but he's wearing $300 sneakers. Huh. Go do what you gotta do. I'll let you know when I find something. It's late, English. Uh, wrong. Wrong? <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that. Here, I will show you. You're my guest. You must twist at the waist. Okay. Keep the blade level with the ground, eh? Okay. Yeah. Twist at the waist. Uh huh. Keep the blade level with the ground, eh? Huh? Now you try. Okay. I got this. Good. Where are you? In case you haven't noticed that the press is having a field day with this disappearing act. If they thought you had something to do with Grace's murder before, now they're practically a lynch mob. I'm not just your business manager. I'm worried sick about you and Bobby. Come home. We'll get this all straightened out. <clears throat> and Dylan's here. Call me. Are you sure you don't know where he is? He doesn't confide in me, you know that. Maybe if you stop trying to get him to invest in those ridiculous business deals. Those were legitimate opportunities. Dylan, I don't have time for this. Why are you here? He's my brother. You're not the only one worried about him. And he said, anytime I came up short, you know, with expenses, How much? Tim, I thought you were good at this. Right, well, what about Bobby and Joe Matthews? All right, well, call me as soon as you know something, okay? Okay. Reminds me of church. <laughs> Where will you go when your vehicle is fixed? Haven't decided yet. And your wife, what does she say? My wife died five months ago. Been traveling around ever since. Yeah. It is a hard thing to lose someone you love. But it is not possible to run away from grief. Well, I haven't had any better ideas. I think you should stay with us a while. Hmm? I must tend to my own work. I will see you again, Joe Matthews. Thank you, Eli.
beautiful singing voice? Uh, hello. <laughs> oh, Rachel, come in, join us. Rachel, come, 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 sit. I can't stay. There's a million people downtown. I just wanted to see how things were going. Well, Joel has been working so hard for us, we invited him and Bobby to stay another night. Is that right? Yeah. And we were saying how he should take Bobby to town for the festival. Oh, the music. Dun, dun, dun. And the rides. <laughs> it's fun for the boy. Can we, Dad? Please. <coughs> oh, you sure you feel up to it? Yeah, I feel great. All right, let's go get cleaned up. Come on. Maybe we'll see you there, officer. I'm sure you will. Oh, may I pick you up? Thank you, dear. Oh, I wash you dry. Okay. okay? Good. Ooh, look at you all, Nancy Drew. Aren't you supposed to be hurting tourists or something? Hey, Cam, do me a favor. As soon as I get a clean print, I want you to scan it. It's gonna take a while to find a match, and I have to get back out there. But as soon as you get a hit, I want you to call me. So that's his fingerprint? Mr. Joe Matthews will no longer be a mystery man. tradition around here. Officer, what a surprise. Mr. Matthews. Hi, Bobby. What do they throw the rocks at? Let me show you. Ah! Ah! How heavy? 138 pounds, exactly. Record stood for eight years, 14 feet, six inches. Ah! Eight feet, two inches. You guys take your rock throwing pretty seriously. Well, there's prize money. It's a hundred dollars for whoever wins. Another hundred if they break the record. Two hundred dollars for throwing a rock. It's harder than it looks. Come on, dragon! Try it, Dad. That is a lot of money. Six feet six inches. Next contestant. John Lombardi! Am I watching him for a little bit? Yeah, sure. What do you say, Coach? Rock and bang, kid. Yeah, right there, just sign it. All right, good luck. Ten feet, four inches! The next contestant, Big Mike!
quite impressed. Thank you, officer. Something tells me that doesn't happen very often. When you say officer, something tells me I'm not the first cop to ask you a lot of inconvenient questions. Seriously? Are you ever off duty? Are you ever going to honestly answer a question? What if I told you there's nothing to know? I just need to be left alone so I can figure some things out. As long as you're living with my aunt, it's not good enough. All right, look, I just need to make enough money so I can get my truck fixed, me and my son get back on the road, and then I promise you'll never see me again. How'd your wife die? My mommy died. It's OK, buddy. Are you going to go away, too? Are you going to die? Don't you worry. I'm not going anywhere. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, he's burning up. <laughs> Bobby? He's having a fever convulsion. We need to we need to go to my car. Oh my god. Temp Bobby, come on. I guess this will be faster. I don't know, Chief, he's still with the doctor. Well, I, I'd like to stay around here, make sure he's OK. OK, thanks. I will. How's Bobby? I think he'll be OK. Oh, yeah. It's what you said. It was fever, ear infection, swollen throat, you know? I knew he was sick. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have brought him in right away. I mean, if you hadn't been there. Hey, he's going to be OK. That's all that matters. Thanks. Uh, I gotta stop by the uh, pharmacist and get a prescription. Uh, it's gonna cost me 180 bucks. That's your prize money. Yeah, so <laughs> my truck's gonna stay a little bit longer. Listen, Joe. No, no, no. I get it. You're doing your job, you're looking out for your family, and I would do the same thing if I was in your shoes. So can you do me a favor and let me make sure he's okay? And then we'll get to all that stuff. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. Joe, come. Come inside. How is the boy? The doctor put him on antibiotics. He'll be OK. What's all this? Bobby will stay here tonight. In the house? It's OK. We'll stay in the cabin. Not in this weather. The cabin's too cold. He'll catch a chill. Bobby will sleep on the couch, and Joe on the floor next to him. You're right, in case he needs them. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to sleep here tonight, Joe. We'll have that talk in the morning. Micah Matias hiding and why? Is he running from the murder scene of his late wife, Hollywood starlet Grace Hunter? Please leave a message after the tone. Our panel this evening will discuss his motives, his alibi, and his future in Major League Baseball. Your friends worry? Is he okay? He woke up when I took his temperature, but I rocked him back to sleep. I believe his fever is broke. I oh, should have got me up. When I worked at the school, I always had children in my lap. <laughs> I miss it. I wish I knew how to thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> the scripture says to treat all strangers as though they were angels. I'm no angel. Far from it. <laughs> Yet I think the more you run from your troubles, the more lost you become. You're a wise woman, Bertha. I am an old woman, but I have learned some things. Now, we must.
must decide what is to become of you. Well, I think I should get my truck fixed and get out of your hair. Because of our Rachel. Well, I just don't think I fit in with her worldview. Do not judge her too harshly. She also has been through much. She lost her mother when she was very young, and her father... The policeman? What happened to him? It's late. Get some rest. You're up and at him? Yeah. Your aunts had a list waiting for me when I sat down to breakfast. Well, they believe that hard work is a blessing. <sighs> Tell you the truth, I'm starting to enjoy it myself. <sighs> well, we're gonna have our talk. Why don't we just start with the easy stuff? Like your shoes. You don't like my shoes? I like your shoes. I'm buy your shoes. It costs three hundred dollars. The rest of your outfit looks like you've been living on the streets. Your hair, your beard. Makes me think that you're in disguise. What are you hiding from, Joe? Just trying to give my son a chance at a normal life. The last couple days, that's normal to you? Compared to what we've been through. Down in Texas? All right, you're not from Texas. Where are you from? All over. Joe, I'm a cop. That's how it works. You have to answer the questions. Why? Have I committed a crime? I don't know. How'd your wife die? My wife was murdered. I was away that night. And someone came into our home and locked Bobby in his room. He was still in there when I came back the next morning. He couldn't understand why his mom wouldn't come when he called. Do you know who did it? The police spent the first week picking up part of my alibi when they couldn't. They decided that it was random, that it was a uh, robbery gone wrong. You don't believe her? She let them in, in the middle of the night. Why would she do that? <laughs> you look good. Wow. I was worried there. Boy, 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 boy. You were asleep for a long time. Morning. 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 Hey. Thank you. Can I see this? I thought you said that stuff turns your brain to mush. Mike Matias, baseball player? It's like saying the Mona Lisa's a painting. Yeah, everybody used to call them the new DiMaggio's. Rachel, can I see you a minute? Yeah. Oh, well, I forgot. We got the results for those prints you sent in. So who's Joe Matthews? He's doing some work for my aunts. And something in his demeanor led you to believe that he was a strange character? He seemed scruffy. He was scruffy. <laughs> Do we have a match? 
No, he's not in our system. He's, he's never been arrested, never been in the military, or worked for the government. Well, that's good. No, Rachel, it's not good. Your dog and a man who's done nothing illegal, who's doing the best he can to take care of his son, who's even trying to pay your aunt's back by working around the inn. It's not like that. It is exactly like that. <laughs> Rachel, you are a good cop. You keep at it. You're going to be as good as your daddy. And Frank Troiler was one of the best I ever had the honor of serving with. This isn't about him. No, it's not. It's about you and what you have yet to learn that Frank understood better than anybody I know. What's that? That there's more to this job than a badge and a gun. Okay. And Rachel, leave him alone. Ladies. We made it nice for you, Joe. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you. But why? To make you and Bobby feel at home. Oh, you've already done that. We have a business proposition for you. We are offering you a job. A job? Mm -hmm. Helping us. There are many repairs that must be done here. Our house needs to be painted, and we can no longer look after the yard. You will do these things for us. We cannot pay a lot, but you could save enough to repair your truck. After that, it is in God's hands. I don't know what to say. Say yes. What do you think, Bobby? I like it here. Me too. Looks like we got a deal. <laughs> hey, Bobby, can you stay? Yeah? Hey, Sam, it's Rachel. Good, yeah. Listen, do you still need help this afternoon? I think I might have found somebody. Stop calling you officer. How are you feeling, Bobby? Okay. We're going to live here now. Yeah, I was going to tell you about that. Your aunt's uh, invited us to stay on a while. Uh, I mean, they could use the help, definitely. Listen, the reason I came down is because I have to ask you a favor. Sure. Every year for the festival, the fire department plays the uh, high school kids in a baseball game. You know, for fun? Uh-huh. Anyway, the department's down a couple guys this year. You play baseball? My dad is the best. He's a little biased. Look, everyone would really appreciate it if you played. Well, I told your aunts I'd finish this fence today. I'm sure they'd be fine if you took off for a couple hours. Do they have hot dogs? You bet they have hot dogs, yeah. Can Dad please? You're just in this for the hot dogs. Knock him dead, kid. <laughs> Not to borrow a glove. We can do that. OK, everybody, listen up. This is Joe Matthews. Joe's filling in for Larry. Uh, do you play much ball, Joe? Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Maybe we'll start you out in right field. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. All right, let's go. Come on. Let's get out there. Let's go. Let's show these hot shots how the game is played. So there's our mystery man. Kind of shaggy, but definitely easy on the eyes. That's not the point. Um, like you haven't noticed. Okay. Okay. Come on!
Joe, you're up. Come on, knock one out of the park. You can do it. Come on. Hey, Dad. No, it isn't. No. to be a show-off. Now what are you gonna do, huh? I just wanted to find a place where my son could be safe again. And now I can't stay. And I can't leave with a broken down truck. I need some help. Hi. Hi. It's quite a game. Guess you really are as good as the magazines say. When did you figure out who I really am? I'm still working on that. Who's Chloe? Chloe's my manager. She um, handles my life. She lined up this gig. It was a motivational conference. I just had to show up and sign some autographs. You know, money was unbelievable, so couldn't pass it up. So the police knew you were out of town? Yeah, I, I had 10,000 witnesses. Well, then why question you? Because they didn't know what else to do. They had no leads, no clues. They kept coming back to how Grace had opened the door and how the killer had locked Bobby in his room. Right, it was somebody that she had to know, somebody that knew Bobby was there. Yeah, they kept trying to dig up dirt, you know, like Grace was having an affair. She let the guy in. Was she? No, I mean, not that I know of. It's not like things were great between us, though. What do you mean? I love Grace. But she was a movie star, and she always put her career first, and... I knew that when I married her. I just didn't think that we'd grow apart the way we did. We kept up a good front, but it was just a matter of time. I'm sorry. You had to have known how that would look, though. I mean, leaving town like that? The tabloids camped out in my house. We were prisoners in our own home. Poor Bobby. 
I'd had enough. My son had had enough. I just wanted to get as far away from there as I could. Don't you have any family? Somewhere you could stay? I have a brother, Dylan, who only comes around when he wants money. You should have told me who you were right away. I would have had to trust you. That's one thing I was running pretty low on when I got here. But I was supposed to trust you. I know. That's. I'm sorry. That wasn't fair. It just never occurred to me that I'd find a place where I'd feel safe again. Where my son could just be a regular kid and start to mend. So what happens now? Well, that depends on you. Are you asking if you can trust me? People would pay a lot of money and know where I am right now. <laughs> They're not going to find out from me. Thank you. Micah. Do you mind if I call you Joe? I'm used to Joe. Me too. All right. All right, Joe, no more baseball for you. You're too competitive. Right, right. What's my problem? Sleepyhead. What's that? I think it's church bells. Are we going to church? Woohoo! Purchase says you must come in to breakfast, hurry in, and then you must hitch up Nelly so you're not late. Late for what? Don't you hear the bells? I guess we're going to church. Who's Nelly? Here, horsey. Whoa. Hold on, horsey. Here, horsey. Here, here. Ah, uh, come on, Nelly. You're making me look bad. <laughs> Looks like you're playing tag. Yeah? Can't we just drive? Nope. Aunt Bertha says if you're going to stay on, you got to learn how to drive the horse and buggy. Come on. <laughs> Joe, what are you doing? I do not mind walking. <laughs> Stop playing around. You must go. You will be late. Okay. Okay. Like so. Like so. Uh, Joe, you put on the bridle. Rachel, show him how to hitch the buggy. Come on, cowboy. Thanks. Your aunts outdid themselves, again. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. We really believe that. Yep, with all their heart. <laughs> Me, I'm not so good with strangers, and I've never met an angel unawares. That seems to come with the territory of being a cop, right? It happened long before I joined the force. What? What do you mean? You trust me? Yeah, I do. I want to trust you. Well, never met an angel either. Sometimes you got to take a chance with a regular person. It was my 10th birthday. The 
aunts, they always made me a cake. So, Dad and I were up to the inn. Percy had to stop at the bank. There was a man robbing the place. My dad was in uniform. And he yelled out. Police, put down the gun! Shot him. Killed him. Everyone was running around screaming. My dad was just laying there on the ground. I grabbed his gun and I pointed it at the guy. I wanted to shoot him so bad, and I couldn't. Hold on, shots. I'm still so scared that somebody's gonna take something from me. Something that I love. I just can't trust anybody. Well, I promise you, nobody understands that fear more than I do. tonight. I know the answer good, so. Fans, an explanation? Do you plan to play next Please season? Why are you here in Sugar Creek? Are you seeking protection from someone? Micah, how do you think the team will do this season? Who's looking after your son, Micah? Micah! Hey, oh, oh, no way you know what you're talking about. Hello? How could you do this? I trusted you, Rachel. How could you do this to Bobby? Joe, what's wrong? 
I just hope you held out for the highest bidder. Joe? Then who did it? You're the only one I told. I don't know. It wasn't me. I didn't tell anybody. What? We have to get you guys out of here, away from these people. I don't want your help. Joe, believe me. Please. It's Micah. Micah Matias. Just ask any one of these people out here. Again, you were having trouble, Joe Matthews. Mr. Matias will be making a statement shortly. In the meantime, he asks that you please respect the privacy of these Amish people who have taken him into their hearts. That's all. No tourists pass by. Hey, Chloe. What? Where? <gasps> Hi, Chloe. Micah. Oh, my God. <laughs> they put me in a train. A famous baseball player. How did he come to be at our door? Everything else he said was true. We just needed to get away from all that. Is Bobby gone? I'm afraid so. I really didn't waste any time once word got out that Mike and Matias was in our little town. I didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. All those magazines you read, I'm really surprised it took you that long. What'd you do, put a word out to the reporters? I'd never do that. Well, how'd they find out? Facebook. But I told everyone it was a secret that no one else could know. How many friends do you have on Facebook? How many friends do those friends have? I'm so sorry, Rachel. Forget it. It doesn't matter anymore. Gone. Facebook? Uh, something about a baseball game in Sugar Creek, Ohio. A friend of mine saw it, called me, and here I am to the rescue. So it wasn't her? Wasn't who? What are you talking about? Rachel. She's, um, she's a friend. Micah, what's been going on with you? Where's Bobby, and why are you dressed like that? Bobby's with Eli who's another friend. And dressing like this was the only way to get past the reporters. Well, don't worry. We'll get you all cleaned up. Luckily, I brought you some real clothes. And I'll handle the press. And you. 
like I always do. I don't care about that. I just want to get back to the house. Oh, of course. But first, there's something that I need to tell you. It's about Dylan. What about him? Would Grace have let your brother into the house that night if you weren't there? Rachel? Rachel Troiler, Chloe Styles, my business manager. Thank you for taking such good care of Micah and Bobby. Yeah, well, you know, they've uh, started to fit right in around here. Mmm, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> we'll have to get them back on the first plane to L.A. so we can get them all cleaned up again. <laughs> right. How are your aunts holding up? Well, I think Aunt Lydia is winning them all over with her cookies. Right. How do they do it? I mean, these people come in uninvited, make a total nuisance of themselves, and your aunts welcome them with open arms. They're used to it, you know? People have made fun of their clothes forever, taken pictures without asking. They decided a long time ago it was easier to be who they are than pretend to be something they're not. Well, don't you worry, Micah. I will take care of this if this is no. my... Rachel's right. What? No more hiding. Who is that? All right, listen up. I know you got a lot of questions. I'm going to try to answer them the best I can. But maybe we should just get a little comfortable. It's going to take a while. Hey, Lydia, I don't suppose you could spare a slice of that apple pie. <laughs> I will be right back. <laughs> After that, we drove through the Midwest for a while. Beautiful country. Oh, we went to, um, we found a barbecue place in Oklahoma City. I don't know what they do to that barbecue sauce, but it is, mmm, mmm. Oh, okay. Good. And uh, Missouri. You ever been to a small town in Missouri called Max Creek? Max Count? this up much longer, they're all going to lose interest. You're right. But they do have good bird watching. I'm not much of a bird watcher, but there was this one moment where I thought I saw a purple martin. That I drove eats ten hours they straight. say that one purple martin eats about 12 mosquitoes a night. There's a huge uh, clock with the Swift, the Swift boy. There's a band and the instruments in the band or a trumpet. All right, thank you. A fiddle. Wait a minute, a cello, a bass cello. All right, Chris, take care of yourself, man. That was a whole bunch of nothing. Good luck in Toronto. What do you think? Uh, I think if there was a place in the Hall of Fame for the dullest player ever, it would be a lock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My work here is done. <laughs> Bobby called. Um, Eli's sow's about to deliver, so he wants to spend the night tonight. Oh, yeah. It'll be the first night he's been away from me in a long time. Well, it took some doing, but I got you a room at the motel. Oh, I'm fine here. 
Whatever you say. Rachel, would it be okay if I followed you into town? It's starting to get dark. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll get lost. Sure. I will see you tomorrow. Questions you got, they can wait till tomorrow, all right? Hello, Micah. Dylan. You're a hard man to find these days. I was thinking maybe we should talk. Were you there? Can we just go inside? I can explain. Just answer the question. Were you in L.A. that night? Grace got murdered? I was there. But only because I had a business deal I wanted to talk to you about. So what did you do? Huh? It, it wasn't me. I swear to God, Micah, I would never hurt Grace. Well, why didn't you go to the police, huh? And say what? Your pathetic brother was there that night, but he didn't do it? Why would they believe me? You don't even believe me. My son was locked in his room all night crying for his mother. The house was dark. I rang the bell. I didn't hear anything. I thought you had all gone out. I didn't even find out about the murder till I saw it on the news the next day. Grace was always kind to me, Micah. Even though I know she didn't like me. She was a good person. She didn't deserve that. Just go. Just get out of here. I know you don't think much of me, and I don't blame you for it. But I would never hurt your family. You need to believe me. That's all I wanted to say. Don't worry. I won't be coming around asking for money anymore. Hello. You're next. Stay away from me. Who is this? Hello? Hey, buddy. What's up? It's your beard. <laughs> it's gone. Guess what, Dad? Me like Sal has mean babies. That's how you say nine in German. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> Thanks for bringing them home. Can I talk to you for a second? You didn't recognize the voice? Mm -mm. You're using some sort of a filter. You're next. They were talking about Grace. I mean, so was her killer on the phone. My brother came to see me last night. What? Why? To tell me that he was in Los Angeles the night that Grace was killed. LAPD know that? But he swore he didn't do it. It's a strange coincidence, though. He shows up the same night I get a threatening phone call. Why would Dylan threaten you? I don't know. I, I gotta get to the station. Call me if you hear from him. Rachel, be careful. Keep an eye on things around here for me.
Didn't you get my message? Said I'd take you out to lunch. I don't really check messages anymore. But if you're hungry, Lydia makes enough food to feed an army. Micah, I can't begin to know what you've been through these past few months. Maybe in some way this whole road trip thing was a good idea, but I think it's time for you to come home now. I've been thinking about that, too. I'm so glad to hear that. Because I care about you both so much, and it's really for the best. I've been thinking about it. And we're not ready to come home yet. <laughs> Spring training starts soon. Spring training. Uh, baseball is the farthest thing from my mind right now. You can't really be willing to throw your whole career away for this. Joe! I got you some more water. Thank you. Excuse me. We're talking here. Do you understand? Why is she talking like that? Thank you, Anna. Don't talk to her like that again. Well, I'm sorry, Micah, but I have to think about your career. You got work to do. Micah! <sighs> okay, yeah, I will. All right, thanks. <sighs> LAPD found no prints or any other forensic evidence connecting Dylan Matias to the scene. Which doesn't make him innocent. Okay, thank you. The phone company says that the call to your house came from one of those disposable cell phones. We can't trace that. What they do know is that it was purchased in L.A. County. All right. All right, let's get a description of this guy out to our people. Send it to the sheriff's department as well. I want to get them involved. I want them to know what's going on, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You stay here, buddy.
extension. They found a gas can in the yard. The state fire marshal's on his way. He's gonna have to make it official. Are you saying this is arson? You wouldn't know anybody who might want to do these ladies harm, do you? We will no longer need to paint the house. I'm so sorry. God will provide. I'm gonna take them to Eli's. So we figure out what to do. Okay, I have to stay here and answer some questions. I'll see you soon. Joel came for us. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you. We need to stop and get something before we go to Uncle Eli's. I just love small towns. Nobody locks their door, not even the police. <laughs> Chloe? You know, I have been dying to ask you something since I got here, and with everyone busy with the fire, it seemed like the perfect time. How did you know about the fire? Are you and Micah... How should I put this? An item? What? I know him so well, and I can tell he really likes you. And I've seen those little looks between you. Something tells me you're attracted to him too, right? All right, I think you better leave before... Before what? You don't really think you can get that gun out before I shoot you, do you, Rachel? And I will shoot you. You killed Grace. She didn't deserve him. And neither do you. Hey, Joe. Joe, somebody wants to talk to you. Sheriff's deputies found him in a motel in the next town. Just so you know, he was there all night, so he couldn't have set the fire. You really thought I was capable of something like this? What was I supposed to believe? You show up. Next thing I know, Rachel gets a threatening phone call. The inn burns down. Chloe was right. I can't trust you. Chloe? Yeah, how did you think I knew that you were in L.A. the night that Grace was killed, huh? Micah, the only thing I talked to Chloe about was money. I never said anything to her about being at your house that night. Well, then how'd she know? Come on. Come on! Guys, let's go. You left Bobby all alone in that room. He was never alone. I waited in the dark until Micah came home. That's how you knew Dylan was there? You were there waiting. How do you think it felt for me? Listening to Bobby cry like that? But he had to stay in his room. I couldn't let him see his mother. You think that you can just replace her? Once Micah and I are married, I'll be a better mother than she ever was. Why'd you burn down the inn? He was getting too attached to this place. He has to come home with me. Rachel learned to watch Noah's taken so long. <laughs> 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 I only want to 
wanted to be with you. Everything was for you. Let's go. <sighs> you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine now. Anna, Lydia, kommt. Kommt nach draußen. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. It's over now. It's just the beginning. <laughs>